What's up everybody? So you already know what the title of this video is. This is my six month update of owning the 2016 Nissan 370Z Nismo Edition. So I'll start off talking a little bit of the backstory, how this car came to be, what I've done with it, how I've driven it, and then finish up with the long term plans of owning this car. So as the backstory of this car, it actually started about a year ago. So one year ago, I had the Genesis Coupe 2 liter turbo. I traded that in for a 2012 370Z touring model with the Sport and the Tech package. And then about six months after owning that car, I ended up trading it in for this 2016 Nismo. Now when I had the Red Z, I really had no intention of selling it anytime soon. I was planning to keep it a year and a half to two years and then trade it in for a GTR after about a year and a half or so. With that car, unfortunately, after about four months, I started getting bored with it, which I feel bad about saying that, but it kind of just, I was kind of bored driving it. It really didn't have that much excitement anymore. I was finding that the seats I didn't like at all. I was just not comfortable sitting in the car. They were too small for me and just, I wasn't really, I don't know, I didn't like some of it. I liked a lot of what the car had to offer, but there were just a few things that I was just getting bored with it. And I had just been able to drive a GTR for the first time that was crazy modified. And that just made me really, really, really want to do whatever I could to get into a GTR like right then and there. I was even thinking of blowing the bank account pretty much, going with the oldest, cheapest GTR I could find, high mileage, you know, an old 09. And that really wouldn't be the smartest choice. Of course, I, I could have afforded it, I could have done that, but I then have a high mileage old GTR that if something happened to it, I wouldn't really have the money to fix it. So that just wouldn't be a smart decision. And I told myself, obviously I'm not gonna do that. And I was filming a review video for another car. This car pulls up. The owner I had actually met a few months earlier when the car had like 2000 miles on it. So I had already known the owner, I knew the car, and he told me that he was gonna consign it. At that moment, I really, I didn't think I was gonna buy it or anything, but I asked him, say, hey, I'd love to do a review video on it. You know, it's the new Nismo. It'd be so cool to actually check it out. So we went for a test drive in the car. And needless to say, I really, really enjoyed it. The moment I stepped into it and sat in these bucket seats, I realized it was amazing. I loved the seats. They fit me so well, and it just felt like something really special. And then, of course, when we were driving the car, going around town on some back roads, the handling characteristics just blew me away. And it was really the perfect solution for me getting bored with my 2012Z, but not really wanting a GTR at this point just because I wasn't quite ready for something that expensive. So obviously I drove it, I fell in love with the handling characteristics, the bucket seats, everything about it worked. Got back to the dealership, talked with the finance manager to go over what I could do. Because at this point I did finance the little bit of the Red Z when I traded in the Genesis Coupe. It was a $10,000 difference to go into the Red Z. My original plan, I was just gonna pay for it cash and call it a day. But learning more and more about life and what you need to achieve goals as you grow up through life, you need to build credit and I had never had credit before, I've always done cash. So I financed the 10 grand with the Red Z and then going to this one, they only needed a couple grand down payment and the payment went up by just a couple bucks. So I didn't really notice it financially, basically the loan just got a lot bigger and in the long term it now made it to where I had a substantial loan under my belt. So in a year from buying this car, any car, you know, $60,000, $70,000 would not be an issue. So that's kind of why I bought it. Financially, it made a heck of a lot of sense. And at the same time, it solved the issue of me getting bored with one car and wanting a car that I couldn't actually afford yet. So now we're into the Nismo. What have I done with it? How many miles have I driven on it? And what have I done? So you might be a little mad about this. I've put about 2,500 miles on it in the last six months. Not that many miles, obviously. It's, you know, I'm not trying to save mileage or make this a garage clean or anything like that. I drive it as much as I possibly can. The month after I bought this car, I bought the Yamaha R6, which is the street bike. I drive that a lot. I commuted all last week on the bike. I didn't drive this at all. So I'm not trying to save miles, like I said, but I have the motorcycle to drive as well. So the type of driving I've done with it, I have done a few mountain road trips with it, and that's where it really, really shines. Just the handling, like I said, when I first test drove it, blew me away when I first test drove it, and then getting it onto the mountain roads. It's amazing how flat it is, how sharp it corners, the entire suspension is super nimble and structurally very sound together. A lot of people think this new Nismo is just an 18 horsepower tune from the factory and a body kit and $15,000 more, but buying it used, this was only about $4,000 more than a comparable 2016 sport model. So for four grand, that's a heck of a deal because you can't even get these seats for that price. You can get aftermarket bucket seats for maybe a grand, but the body kit, the wheels, the tuning and the entire different suspension, the structural support that's now in this car, 
you couldn't even touch for four grand. And on top of that resale, this is holding its value once it already dropped. The first owner took a $15,000 hit. I'm probably not gonna take a huge hit on this car and if I got a 2016 Sport, I'd lose about the same. So if I modded a normal Sport Model 1, I would lose that money. So this financially was a much better choice and handling wise, characteristic wise of a sports car, this is a complete night and day difference. So far I've done the exhaust and the air intake on it, the AAM resonated short tails and then their cold air intake as well. This exhaust system is perfect for the car. It sounds so awesome. It's just got a great tone to it. There's not really any annoying drone. It pops a little bit on the downshifts every now and then. It's hard to make it do it every time, but it, it sounds pretty epic. So now that we're moving again, some of the things that I really like about the car and then some of the things that I don't like about the car. So I've already made the videos, things I like and things I hate about the car. First off, thank you all so much for the support in the five things I hate about my car video. You guys understood the goal of that video and that has way more thumbs ups than thumbs down. So that's probably a record for that type of video. So things I like, the handling, I've said that a hundred times, I love the handling. It's very direct, very sharp feeling. The seats are another thing that I absolutely love. I think they make this car just because you use your seats every time you're in the car. The driver's seat is very important. And when I'm in it, I am cradled in a bucket seat. I am glued in, I can't move, and it's just comfortable. It supports me a lot better than the standard seats did. It's better for long road trips, I think, and just the whole car, I think, is something that there are no competitors to it. Now, of course, for 35 grand on the used market, I could have got something that is a lot faster. I could have got a V8 Mustang, a V8 Camaro, or something that does have more power, but this car is like an old school sports car, but in a new vehicle. A lot of people do like to hate on this car because it hasn't changed in nearly a decade, and they're right. It, 2009 is pretty much the same as this. Obviously, there's upgrades with the Nismo, but fundamentally, it is the same car. But that's a good thing because when you look at totally different class of car, when you look at supercars, what does everybody say? They miss the manuals and the naturally aspirated engines. The manual Gallardo, manual Ferraris, the R8 V10 with a gated manual. People love that raw, true experience. And now when you look at so many new cars, it's all twin turbos and paddle shifting. So people like the raw aspects of just a fun sports car. And that's what this car is. It's simply fun to drive. It's quick enough, under five seconds to 60. It's quick enough around town. I get up to speed in second gear. So, you know, it's not like I can use all of the power all the time anyway. But then you're getting handling characteristics that feel as tight as a Ferrari. And I know it sounds like I'm a fanboy saying that, but I've driven the Ferrari 458 and that was my first supercar that I've driven. And it blew my mind how tight that car is together. And when I hopped in this, the first thing I thought about was that car. So. That's a really big plus on this car, and good job Nissan for making something that good. But it's a car that just handles really well, it's raw, it's dramatic, it has a lot of driver engagement. You can't just drive this car your first time, It's you have to kind of work for it. The shifting and the clutch pedal is a little bit different compared to most cars. It's just, it's got something to it that creates drama and somewhat of a challenge every time you drive the car, which makes it to where if I'm just grocery shopping or on the mountain roads, I'm having fun. So now as for the things I don't like, obviously I made the video of five things I hate, but really there's only one thing I'm finding that I'm not the biggest fan of, and it's the Alcantara steering wheel. Now, I like it, I think it is cool, but long term, I'd rather have a leather one if possible. I haven't done any type of maintenance or cleaning on it, and it shows it's kind of nasty looking when your hands are, you know, it's hot out and you're sweaty a little bit, not weird, but you know, if your hands sweat a little bit, it gets, wet looking and dirty looking and matted down and kind of looks nasty if you don't maintain it so I do need to get a really good Alcantara cleaner and a brush to clean it properly. So that's something small to not really like about the car but I just got to maintain it better so that's kind of my fault but if I had the choice I would rather just have leather just because you can wipe it off and call it a day. So really nothing I hate about the car. It's not the most practical car out there. It's got a small trunk more than I need, so I could care less about that. And there's a little bit of road noise, so it's not the quietest car either, but the fun factor is what I paid for when I bought this car, and that's what I like about it. So on to the future plans. How long am I gonna own this car? Well, I had the Red Z for six months. I said I was gonna keep it for a lot longer than that. We're now at the six month mark to this, so am I trading this in next week? Probably not, uh, most likely no. Um, I'm planning to have this car at least one full year. So February, March of next year is when I will consider a GTR or something along those lines. The good thing about this car is I'm not itching to get out of it. I've driven many other sports cars and a few supercars in the time being that I've had this car. And 
in no time have I just thought I really gotta get out of the Nismo and get into the next car because it'd be so much fun. Every time I hop back in this, I'm happy and I enjoy it. So there's nothing really driving me to hurry up and sell it or get into something else. And that's awesome that it worked out that way because I did have those feelings in the Red Z which made me not enjoy my car. And I like cars, so having a car that I wasn't enjoying made me sad because obviously I don't like that. So I'm glad that I'm in something that I don't want to sell anytime soon. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the next car. We'll save that for the one year update on this car, but I am thinking eight to 10 months from now is when most likely I will be trading this in for the next vehicle. So the next six months, we'll be in this car. I'm gonna continue enjoying it. I have a few more mods planned for it. More mountain road trips, probably a track event this year and probably beginning of next year. So I think that's about everything I needed to cover for the six month update. Bottom line is I really like the car and I think if you are in the market for a fun sports car, you just want the most fun you can get for the best price. The 370Z really has to be on your short list. And if you're even close to the $30,000 mark, consider a 2015 or newer Nismo edition. It is totally a night and day difference between the standard Z and this car, just the way it rides. I mean, right now I'm on a bad road and it's, it's abrupt. It feels like a supercar almost. It just has so many characteristics that you can't get for this price range. And while, like I said, there's faster cars for this price, more practical cars for this price. Honestly, I don't think there is a more fun car at this price point just because the way it feels, it feels like something completely else. So that sums up six months of ownership of a 2016 Nismo 370Z. It has been a very, very fun car to own. I am enjoying it so much, and I am loving the fact that so many of you guys love the videos that I've been posting with the car. When I unveiled it, people loved it. When I even unveiled the Red Z, people loved it. So there's so much support in the Z car community, and it's really nice to be a part of something much bigger than just me and my car making a few quick videos. It's nice to see so many of you guys commenting with your own Zs, talking about modifications to your cars, and even meeting up with some people doing road trip events and all sorts of car meets. So the Z, I am really impressed with the car. I've loved owning it. It's been fun. Many more months to come owning this car, and it is going to continue to be a beast of a car. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. Be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you are new to the channel. Check out tons of videos with the Z. My brother just bought the brand new Tacoma, and we are doing some pretty good off-roading and off-road mods to that thing. So we have a lot of cool stuff coming. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you all next video.